that my car would not start and I'm pretty sure it's the battery because when I was trying to start it I heard this clicking sound and it just would not come on so I called my friend Kaylee who knows a lot about cars and is going to teach me how to jump start my battery Okay, so hey guys, Hannah called me and luckily I had jumper cables. Now if she were to run into a situation where she was calling someone who didn't have jumper cables, you could easily just run to the store and pick some up. Now there are a couple options that you have with jumper cables. If you didn't have a working car and you were going by yourself, what you can do is there's um, power banks already attached to cables and what you can do is you can just buy that and you don't even have to have another car with you. You can also get the, just the cables themselves, which is what I carry around, and there's different lengths. And so I have a 20 foot one in case the um, situation were to occur that I needed to jump someone that I wasn't able to park right next to. I could park a space or two away from them and still be able to reach their engine bay. Now one important thing that we want to note is because we are using two cars that the engine bays are lined up with each other. So as you can see, we have our hoods open and we have already located our batteries. As you can see, this is the dead car's battery. And how you note that is that it's gonna have a positive and negative terminal. On my car, and some cars, if you can't locate it, look at your owner's manual. Mine ended up being under this cover. So all I have to do is lift it up and remove it. So there's mine and the dead car's battery. So what we're gonna next note is that on the jumper cables, you're gonna have two ends, each end having one red and one black. So each are gonna be clamps, and if you can't, if um, there's gonna be a positive and negative on it. So this one's positive and negative. So what we're gonna do first is, before we start messing with the engine bays, we wanna note that to make sure you're using as much caution as possible because we are working in electrical charged engine bay. So we don't want to hurt ourselves or hurt the car in any further possible way. So we're gonna take the red and the black. And as you can see, the red is positive and that's gonna match up with the positive terminal. And usually the positive terminals have a flap. So we're gonna open that flap to expose where we're gonna attach the cable. So you're just gonna open the clasp like this and you're going to attach it right on there. And you're gonna wiggle it a little bit and make sure that it's good on there. And for right now, we're just gonna leave the black one right here. And so we're gonna go to the working car now. And you're gonna take the red and black. And we're gonna attach, just like we did the red one there, we're gonna attach the red one over here. So you're gonna open the terminal and you're gonna open the clasp and you're just gonna put it right on, if I can get it, there we go. You're gonna put it right on the terminal. Now the next thing to note is we're gonna be working with the black ends now, so the negative ends. You're gonna attach the negative black one to the working battery. So we're just gonna clasp that one right there. So we just attached both ends to the working battery. So now we're gonna come back over to the dead car's battery. One thing we wanna note is that the cables are not anywhere near the engine car or the engine bays. So we wanna make sure that they stay on the ground as far away from the engine bay as possible because we don't need anything else dangling in there. So we're gonna take the negative side and we're going to next look for any, this is the most important part, any unpainted metal surface on the dead car's engine. Now, we don't wanna attach it to the battery because that's not gonna really complete the circuit. And so we're attaching it somewhere. And what you might notice is that if the car was locked before the battery died, when you would start attaching it to something, it might turn on the car's horn. So don't get scared, but all you need to do is take your keys and unlock your car. Another thing you might see is a little bit of a spark. That's just because you are completing a circuit. And so a little spark is okay, but if you see a lot of spark, you might not be able to attach it to that point. It's not hurting your car, but don't leave it there because if you start to get sparks in your hands, then you might get hurt. So we're just gonna open up the clasp like we did before, and we're gonna attach it. And we're gonna wiggle it a little bit to make sure it's good. So right now we have all four cables attached. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the working car and we're gonna turn that on. Once you turn that on, leave it running for about a minute to give it time to charge this car's battery. And then you're gonna try this car. You might hear a couple clicking sounds like you did before, but hopefully it turns on. If it turns on, great. 
what you're gonna need to do next is remove the cables before you drive it around, but you're gonna then drive it around for about 15 minutes to give the car time to charge. If it doesn't start, then it might not be a battery problem, and you can call any of like your insurance, um, any like car part place around here, like AutoZone, O'Reilly's. Um, you can get another battery at Walmart if the case needs to be. Um, or on the back of your driver's license, there is a number that you can call. But now I'm going to tell you how to remove the cables, and this is also important because you're going to do it in the opposite um, pattern that you did when putting them on. So first, we're gonna untouch the negative one to the working or to the dead car's battery or engine bay. So we're untouching this one, and we're gonna leave it on the car. And then we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna go negative first. So you just press open the clasps. And an important thing to note is that you don't want to touch the ends to each other because that will also cause a spark, and because it's positive and negative terminals and that could also hurt you. So we unattach both sides and once again don't touch the cables to each other. Then we're going to come back over here. We're going to unattach this positive one. Hopefully the car is running at this point and the cables are free to touch themselves now because they're not attached to anything and just make sure that you have them back in your car and encourage anybody to carry them with you if you ever run into this case again. And now back to Hannah. So now I know what to do if I ever find that my battery is dead or if a friend's battery is dead, all thanks to Kaylee. And just in case you felt that this video was too uncomfortable for you to do or you're not sure that you can do it, you can always call AAA, your local towing company, or your insurance company and they will be glad to come out and help you. Thank you.